Hi. Now in this video, we are going to talk about dynamic array. Now what are dynamic array? Dynamic array are those array which are dynamic in nature. Means their size is not fixed at compile time. So if I want to declare a dynamic array inside Solidity, this is how I declare a dynamic size array inside Solidity. So UINT, since I am declaring a UINT type array, then in the brackets, we are not going to write any integer means in the fixed size array if you remember we have written five there right so that we can tell the compiler that we are actually declaring an array of five elements but in this case we are not going to use any such thing because this array is dynamic in nature and to insert elements inside this dynamic array what we have to do is we have to use this push method that is available with this dynamic array so with this, we can push an element to this array. If we want to pop an element, if we want to remove an element from this array, then we use this arr.pop function. It removes the last element every time it executed. So with the help of this pop function, you can remove the last element from this arr array. And the third point is that if you want to find the length of this array, then you can use this arr.length function. It will return you the length of this array in a uint data type form so now let us try all these things on our remix ide now in order to declare our dynamic size array first of all i am writing uint then public and then arr okay definitely the name of this variable can be anything i'm just using arr you can write abc as well so let's say i want to insert some element inside this array for that i need to have function then we need to tell the element that you want to insert so let's say item okay and then public and inside this as we have seen we need to write arr dot push and then the element so item okay so you cannot provide any index here because it automatically insert the element at the zeroth index and when you will call it again it will insert the element at first index and so on okay so you do not require to write any index uh, index field here okay in the same way let's say you want to remove an element so function remove let's say remove last element actually so here you will write again public and then you can write arr dot pop okay so by this you can remove the last element from an array from this array actually and let's say you want to find the length of this array so length and then you can simply write public and since this length, okay, one more thing we need to have view, then returns. And since this length will be of UID type, so we will do that as well. So return arr dot like this. Okay. Okay, I think we made some mistake. Let me see what is the mistake here. Okay, I think I made this mistake. Let me have arr and let me remove this because it does not it, it it is not required here so now we can again deploy this to check it so if you will see uh if you will find the length of the array currently it is zero because there are no elements inside it so let's say i want to insert some element let's say 100 i will click on insert so now i can check the length it is now one because one element is inserted at zero to index it is having 100 right in the same way, I can insert some more elements, let's say 200 and let's say 300, something like this. So now if you will check the length, it is three. So three elements are inserted. We can check that as well at index zero. So yeah, at index two, we have 300. Now let's say I want to remove this 300 element. Okay. So to remove this 300 element, what I have to do is I have to simply call this remove last function. And now if you will check the length of the array, now it has decreased from three to two because we have removed the last element and if you will check the second index you will see that it will give you an error so here the transaction has been reverted to the initial state because the reason is very simple guys because at second index now there is no element and we are trying to call that particular element right so that's why it is given us this error that you are trying to call an element which does not exist that's why the transaction has been reverted but if you will try to call at index one there will be no problem because at index one we have this 200 right but at index two 
or let's say at index 3 there are no elements so definitely it will throw an error that there is no array element and let's say if you want to uh call this entire array if you want to see the entire array then again you have to write this function function a should be function and uh, return all and then again public view and in this as well since this is a reference type data type right so you need to have memory keyword as well but in this you will have uint and then you will have this bracket square brackets and this square bracket will be empty because this is also empty right and then you need to use this memory keyword again okay and then we will write return arr like this okay and let me deploy this once more and here i will insert some element let's say 11 and let's say then 12 and let's say 13 and now when i will call this return all you will see that 11 12 and 13 are returned from this arr element means from this arr array from this return all function okay so this is how this is how you actually create insert remove find length and return all the elements of a dynamic array so i hope you enjoyed this video meet you soon in the next video if you have liked this video please click on that like button if you are new to this channel please subscribe to this channel because i am regularly going to upload new blockchain courses on this channel so meet you soon in the next video till then take care bye bye and do not forget if you have any doubts please comment below okay